Welcome back, I'm Ryan from Bluewood Gaming, and this is a video showing how to skip a very large portion of the game. It puts you right into the Forbidden Woods, almost at the beginning of the game. I will have a playthrough coming up somewhat soon, a little joke playthrough that uh, shows that you can do this right off the bat, and that just shows my stats right there to show you that I am a very low level doing this. I don't have upgraded weapons or anything yet. You're just going to have to come to this spot in Central Yarnum, kill this guy who happened to murder a lot of people in the beta. Uh, he still, to this day, murders quite a few people, and he almost murdered me. So after you kill this guy, you're going to want to just run past him back to where he was, and there's a coffin that you're going to want to try to do a special jump on that coffin right there and if you walk up to it there's a little bump that uh, pushes you up on top of it you have to jump right at the beginning of that bump which pushes you up on the ledge and don't worry this will take a long time for you to get used to I can do it pretty easily now but as you see, I'm having some issues with it, like a lot of issues. And here you go, after all those many attempts, I finally make it. Uh, now, after some practice, it only takes me one or two tries usually. And what you want to do when you finish is get over to this section, stay up on the ledge, and then, as you can see, when you walk next to the sandbags, it bumps you up just slightly. Uh, this is my first time ever being up on the railing that I have recording right here, so that's why I don't exactly know what to do. But you can either backstep over the fence, which will usually slide you off the ledge. It works occasionally. The way that I do it here is what... Uh, is what I usually do to get over the fence. Although, do be careful that you don't aim too far to the right as this can happen and you'll get stuck and you'll have to use a bold hunter's mark to get out. I tried for a little bit, you can't exactly get out any other way than a bold hunter's mark, which makes you restart the whole process. Now, when you finally get it, it's going to look a little something like this. Right like that. That's about as good as it's going to work. And you just want to jump off over to the side. Once again, I just stand here because it's my first time ever doing this, and I'm actually having help from one of my friends who has already done this. And when you jump down, the first thing that you want to do is you want to open up this gate so that you don't have to do any of that jumping again. You can just walk back through this gate. And now is for the part where that it gets fairly interesting. When you finally decide to run down here, you just want to go down these two elevators, or ladders, sorry, and then follow the path that I show. Make sure to not get hit by any of these giants as they will most likely one-shot you if you are a low level or if you have anywhere near 15 to 20 vitality. They will usually hit you, dodge those snakes. Uh, stay to the left when you're going away from the ladders and stay to the right towards that wall when you're going towards the ladders. Now you just want to come up here through the entrance to the cave, the original entrance to the cave because we did go in through the exit. You can pick up this item if you want. It's not really that useful right now for what we're doing but when you just continue going up towards the exit you're going to run into several cages and you pretty much want to kill 
as many of the dogs as you really want to. I kill three here, although there is a fourth one. I pick it up every other time. Well, I kill the dog every other time except for this one because I forgot that there was a fourth dog there. And pretty much what you want to do is run back from this point. And when you get back to this ladder, don't forget, wait until the poison goes away and then climb up the ladder. If you don't do that, there is a very high chance that you will just die on the ladder and you'll have to restart this process over again from going through the gate that you opened earlier. Okay, so now that you're up and out back to the surface, you're going to want to follow this little path that I show leading back into the Forbidden Forest. Even though you're technically still in Yarnum, this is just a little path off of the Forbidden Forest. And watch out for this guy. He hits like a truck. You can just avoid him. Uh, you're pretty much just going to be wasting blood vials if you try to fight them. You just want to run over to this ladder right here. You can just forget about that item. There's nothing really too special about it. And then there will be four or five crows up here. That's right, five. And then you want to make sure that you go to the right and not the left. If you go to the left, you have a chance of messing up this glitch entirely just go to the right and make sure that you kill this guy if it's your first time through then once he's dispatched you open up this door and look at where you happen to spawn the beginning of the game yeah that's where that leads to and as you can see, you pretty much just run around this room and you'll pick up blood echoes every once in a while. It will be the combined total of the wolves in the cages that you kill. And it's only the wolves in the cages that you kill. And when you get back into this room, you see me running in circles because I'm trying to find that butter zone or the butter path, you could call it, where you pretty much just run in circles and then you'll get a bunch of blood echoes. I recommend some rubber bands on your controller to just leave it in place. You'll get approximately 1.8 million blood echoes per hour, uh, maybe a little bit more. It just depends on how often your blood echoes come to you. And here is a little bit of footage of me in that butter zone. As you can see, the camera angle is a little weird, but that's because that's how I have my controller set up with the rubber bands. Uh, for me, I pointed both of them up towards the left trigger, and I was standing in the middle of the room, and I'm just running circles in this footage. And here's some more footage of me, and the absolute best case scenario, I'm getting blood echoes about every two seconds ish that's about as fast as you can go and as you can see they just combo together over and over and over again and this is pretty much what you want to have happen and that's pretty much it for the game skip and the blood echo glitch in bloodborne this will eventually get patched there's no way around that but for now remember i'm riding from blue to gaming and i will see you guys in the next one.